So, you know, one little seldom spoken about aspect of podcasting is uh, the, the, the fine art of the, of the bathroom break and, and bladder pressure. And right. I mean, when have you ever heard that, Noah? Uh, I've heard it now from you, Chris, and it, it rings true. It totally rings true. I was impressed by uh, by you being conscientious of your of your levels there. Um, you know, there's all kinds of levels we need to be concerned with in podcasting, and uh, you're on top of all of them. So shout out to you. <laughs> Has Dave Jackson done an episode about about bathroom breaks and bladder control, or Daniel J. Lewis? I mean, really? Come on, guys. They should. They should. Please. Well, you're cornering the market. <laughs> All right. Well, no, Noah Snyderman's here, but we're going to, we got to, we got to start this off, right? You know. Ah! Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, dude, I had to turn my headphones down. Wow. I don't usually oh, have really? them up, but welcome to the Podcast Engineering Show. I'm going to do a brief intro. My name's Chris Curran. I produce podcasts for some big companies and some medium companies. And every week on this show, we bring you podcast production techniques on a silver platter. We really do. And I'm going to have to get a picture of myself at some point, like dressed up as like a butler with like holding a silver platter. That'd be kind of cool, right? I should do that. You should. We really talk shop about podcast production. And I have a background in audio engineering in the music business. And, you know, I've been in podcasting for about seven years now, something like that. Anyway, this show is here to help you as a podcaster or podcast producer sound a lot better and spend less time producing the audio because time is a factor. And, you know, some people say time is money. Barry, is time money? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, please. Oh, forget it. I know. I'm telling you. All right. Well, so Noah Snyderman's here. But real quick, the uh, Podcast Engineering School, I'm actually... The, the January semester is starting like within a few days of you hearing this, so uh, it's probably too late. And uh, But the April semester is coming. We do four semesters a year of podcast engineering school, so if you really want to learn deep stuff about audio production, everything, it's, it's it, I don't even know how to describe the school. We should get some, should get some graduates to, well, there's, there's testimonials on the website, but um, anyway... Noah Snyderman is here. He's the producer of The Dopest. The do- and I'll spell that. D-O-P-I-S-T. Yeah. No, because when I said it, Noah, I thought of like, the like remember back in the, the 90s when, you know, you'd hear a rap song and you'd be like, oh, that's dope. Well, that's, that's what we're playing on, Chris. You're, you're all <laughs> over it. Well, wait, yeah. though. I thought, I thought the show was about cannabis, though. Well, okay, so it is, but... That expression, the dopest. I mean, that comes from the same place, doesn't it? But um, but yeah, we're we're playing on that. I mean, it's it's taking that angle of cannabis, the you know, the dopest kind of the '90s, and, and also um, bringing it up to this day and age where it's becoming a legal product, especially here in Canada. It's legal nationally, uh, and people's perceptions towards it are starting to change. So the the IST is something you might see in kind of like a seratorial magazine or, you know, pharmacist. There's, there's, it's kind of, um, it's a little bit classier. So that's, that's sort of how the name came about. Yeah. And I, I just, for myself, I just thought the spell, I thought EST in the spelling was what what I would have expected, but I like the IST. Right. I like it, and I didn't know that uh, marijuana was legal all over in Canada. I didn't know that, but I don't, you know, it is, and and that's how uh, that's the reason that we started the show. Essentially, was to cover it because there's lots of new laws, new uh, you know business acquisitions. There's tons of news. There's there's a ton of news with this with this new legal market that's that's being created. So that's that's what we're covering on the show. Uh, Barry, are you into that whole thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't let it. I didn't pause enough. Like it's weird when Barry answers too quickly, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, all right. <laughs> so we're gonna really get into uh, Noah, your production. We want to know about uh, your processes and the different phases and and how you're producing the audio and your signal chain and everything. We're, we're gonna talk about everything. You also work at uh, a radio station CJRU in Toronto. So that's kind of cool. Um, that's that's it. Yeah, it's a community radio station here on Ryerson campus, Ryerson University, and um, we get a lot of students who come here 
um, interested in doing podcasts. So yes, it's a radio station, but like in this in this day and age, uh, you know, people in their twenties are way more familiar with podcasting. That's cool, and I'm really happy you messaged me because of the uh, sometime in the last few episodes, I was like, please, I was ple- begging and pleading, please, is there anyone out there who can be my guest? <laughs> All right, maybe yeah. I didn't. I didn't grovel like that, but uh, I was happy you you messaged me and you gave me a lot of info. So I'm really psyched to talk about your um, your your production. Now you're not a host of any of the shows, correct? So I'm a host of the uh, Innovating Employment podcast. Yeah, and and I've I've hosted shows in the past, but I'm 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 really more into the uh, the producing and the engineering. So that's that's where I'd like to go. But you don't always have, you know, you know, you can't always find a host. So sometimes you've got to be the host. That's right. I like that. All right. So, so for the speed round, then let's do the speed round. And what we're going to quickly want to know from you is, you know, your signal chain, like you're getting ready to do an episode of innovating employment. And so what mic are you talking into? Where's it plugged into? Where are you recording it? How you, and quickly, how you post per doing post-production and all that. So give us a speed round. Absolutely. So it depends if I'm if I'm working here at the radio station or if I'm out in the field. Um, here at the radio station, I'm lucky enough to have access to a bunch of Shure SM7Bs, which I love. Uh, but when I'm out in the field, obviously they're they're big, they're bulky, they're heavy, and I don't I don't own them, uh, so I can't I can't bring them around with me. So what I do when I'm out in the field is I use Shure SM57s with the A81 WS windscreen and the A55M mount, which is pretty much the same setup that that uh, they use for the U.S. vice uh, the the U.S. president when they're doing uh, presidential addresses. Nice. Um, and to me, I mean, it's the same mic capsule, right, as the 7B. And because that uh, A81 WS windscreen is just so so gigantic, I don't know. To me, to me, the sound is somewhat similar. Um, and then I plug that into a Mix Pre 3 sound devices. I know that's, I mean, Chris, you have the, uh, do you have the 10 or you have, oh, you the have six. a Mix Pre 2, right? You have the 6. Yeah, the 6. Yeah. Um, yeah, so but I found for podcasting purposes, usually having more than three guests ends up being a little too chaotic anyway. So mm-hmm. I have the Mix Pre 3 because that's usually what I top out at would be having um, having three guests. But you can always, I mean, you can always use like a, a combiner or something if you want to get a, a fourth mic into the mix. But so anyways, I record into my Mix Pre 3 onto the SD card. And then I grab that SD card and slap it into my computer and pull off the files. And my first step is renaming them because everything is, it's, you know, mix pre and then the date, which uh, isn't necessarily, especially if you've recorded a whole bunch of stuff that day, it doesn't necessarily help you figure out what's what. Um, So the first thing I do is I open it up into Audition. I cut off, uh, you know, any of the sort of setup before we're recording, you know, my my, my testing levels and stuff like that. and, And I name it. And, um, okay, so, Chris, I'm about to go on a pretty long rant. Are, is this okay? Should I keep going here? No, this is, well, it's okay. I mean, uh, you know, just keep it as short as you can because, you know, we're going to walk back through all this and pick through it all. So. Okay, sounds good. So I have, I, I, run, I run my audio through um, RX-6, and then I run it through Ophonic, and then I send it back to Audition. And uh, I do that mostly using a program called Hazel, which I guess we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, and then sometimes I use a program called Forecast uh, to, to turn my markers into chapters and to kind of encode the MP3 with the full metadata. That's cool. Yeah, I can't. I really want to talk about Hazel. Well, for a little bit. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple thing, I know. But uh, yeah. And also Forecast with the chapters. All right, so this is good. So then that's it. Then you, you know, mix it down, tag it and and upload it. Uh which which uh host do you use? Media host. So I've been using Spreaker for a while. Um I've also used Libsyn, I've also used SoundCloud. Uh, I haven't used Simplecast, although I'm interested in using Simplecast at some point, but I I've loved Spreaker so far. Cool. All right. And then uh how many episodes have you done of Innovating Employment? Innovating Employment is on 11 episodes. Uh, the Dopest is on 12. Uh, and those are the, the longest running shows that I've done. Cool. 
All right. Well, this is good. So let's uh, thank you for uh, abiding by the speed round. <laughs> oh, did you ever, absolutely. Did you ever hear there's there's what I don't know what there's been a couple episodes of this show where the speed round it never ended ever didn't end. Well, Chris, you're not you're not you're not asking traditional speed round questions. These aren't yes or no personal preference. You know, what's your favorite food type questions. You're you're asking podcast engineers about their signal chain. So I mean, what do you expect? I, I was tough to make myself stop. I wanted to keep going. <laughs> totally. And Barry, of course, Barry, who is the maintenance guy in my old building, and he's, he he yeah. sits right next to me as I produce the show. Oh, uh, I'm, Bar- I'm familiar with Barry, Chris. I'm Barry, very familiar. Barry, you like talking about your. Your, your signal chain and gear set up, right? Oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> a little late on the trigger there. See, this is ready. And, um, and, uh, hey, hey, Chris, can I ask you, how do you trigger those berry samples? Where do you have them? Is it an audio hijack? Actually, no. I have it on an app on an iPad. And so, and the app is called, what is the app called? All right, here I'm going to start. Oh, it's called Soundbite. And it's called Soundbite. It's on my iPad, and I literally just take the the audio out of the iPad and put, and it goes into my Mix Pre Six. Cool. And yeah, it works. I like having a physical pad that I can tap the the buttons and the sound effect plays. I tried to use uh, what is it called, Farago by Rogue Amoeba, and and that works pretty good too. But I well, again, I just felt better with a separate physical thing that I could touch rather than right. a you know a program running on the same computer where I'm doing everything else. Right. Plus you might get that click sound. Right. The, the click sound like right. Well I don't know if you can hear this. No, you probably can't hear that. Anyway. No, I can't. And my gate might cut it off anyway. So all right. So the SM seven B, that's awesome. Uh and you're in a studio right now. And I should mention to everybody because well you're using an SM7B that's plugged into your Mix Pre 3. Yeah. And of course, that rhymed. Uh, and you're in a nice studio. Uh, but you and I, right now, we're connected over Zencaster, and your Mix Pre 3 isn't connected to your computer. So you're just talking into the computer mic, and that's how I'm yeah. hearing you right now. But in post production, you're going to send me the recording from your Mix Pre 3, and then I'm going to. Re- replace the Zencaster file with that, and so you'll sound awesome on an SM7B. That's it. So r- right now I've got a laptop with me. Um, I've I've had success plugging the Mix Pre 3 into my desktop computer as an interface, but for some reason it's been a little bit a um, little bit inconsistent with this laptop. I'm still troubleshooting it and figuring out why. So I've just gone into the habit of recording straight to SD. Mm. And when you tried hooking the Mix Pre 3 up to that laptop. Did you plug in both of the? Because there's yeah, two course, USB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. it, it, it recognizes it, but if I if I fire up Audition, for instance, and I arm the tracks, um, you know, it recognizes the tracks, and I can set it up perfectly. But then I don't get any signal. I don't. It doesn't record. So I'm not sure exactly why. It's something I'm still trying to figure out. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And usually Macs are really good about all that. But um, one thing with my Mac, I've been using it for well almost a year now uh it's amazing and like i know compute like i know there's probably not any artificial intelligence in this computer but i'm telling you at times like you know like when you do the same thing on your computer every day Mm -hmm. and like it just it's almost like the computer learns what you want to do and then it just it then it works or it does it or something i don't know it's hard to explain Nice. Well, I'm I'm glad you have that kind of a relationship with your computer where it's like really dialed into your needs and your well, and your preferences. I think that is an energetic thing because I have met several people in my life and I'm not no joke. Several people and they tend to be older people who anything they do on a computer is a problem. Of course. And, and nothing works and everything is a huge fucking problem. Okay. Uh huh. It just you you see that you see that I, I I have a by the way I have a one kilohertz tone so I'm not really cursing people. <laughs> oh sorry I left it on for too long. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, but yeah I do feel that like like 
electronics, right? It, it's like they somehow respond. I don't know. There's some deeper connection. Anyway, that's maybe that's for a different show. Noah, what do you think? <laughs> I'll listen to it. Hey, you make it. I'll listen to it. <laughs> I just listened to a, a, an episode of Lore with Aaron Menke, and it was all about, well, like, in the 1870s, you know, doing seances and stuff. And it's, it's so funny. Like, so, like, like, these people who, you know, conjured up spirits, it's like they sit in a different room behind. It, it's like a closed off room, and they go there and they sit in a chair to conjure up a dead person. But then the people who are sitting around the table, they can't see the person sitting in the chair. So then the person in the chair just gets up and puts on different clothes and comes in the room like they're a ghost and then goes back in the other room, changes clothes and sits back in the chair. And it's like, really? Did people believe that was a a real seance with a real ghost? It's weird. I haven't listened to Lore, but uh, I hear it's great. Lore's great. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you got the SM7B. That's a great mic. And do you have the big, huge windscreen on it or just the smaller, normal one? Yeah, yeah. We have the huge windscreen, the huge one. The huge one. Okay, yeah. So yeah. that's one thing that's cool about the SM7B. Like, without the huge one, there's a smaller one that's actually just part of, like, you. if you took, well, when you take that smaller one off, you can actually see the, like, the diaphragm of the mic and you could see literally the innards of the mic, but... Um, yeah. But on top of the smaller one, you can put this huge one, which is so big that it, I felt weird when I was talking into it. I'm like, this is like, it's like talking into a, a huge pillow or something. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but there's no plosives with it. You don't even have to worry about it. So that's kind of nice. Totally. All right. And when you're in the field, you use the SM57s with the A81WS windscreens. Is that the same one that Alan Tepper was talking about or is it different? You know, I think that may be where I got it from. Okay. I think I may have gotten it from that episode. So, because uh, I, I think I got, I think I got that set up from one of your guests. So, it okay. uh, could be, yeah, yeah. So it was Alan Tepper. I forget which episode he was, but okay. And you do your recording on the Mix Pre Three, and uh, what what resolution do you typically record at? Uh, usually forty four point one and twenty four bit uh, is what I've found. Cool. It just makes sense. I mean, it seems seems like that's standard pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty well, twenty four bits awesome. Uh twenty four bit is a lot better than sixteen bit in terms of resolution. But the difference between forty four one and forty eight kilohertz is eh, it's not not much of a difference, but uh yeah. f- for forecast automatically uh encodes MP3s as forty four point ones. Um so even if it's a forty eight it uh what is it? Down samples it or what? Would, uh, I don't know. Dithers what, it, would, I think. Is that it? Dithers it. Yeah, something like that. So I just figured like rather than putting that in the hands of forecast, just record it as 44.1. I like that. I really like that. See, that's an that's an engineer's state of mind right there. Just avoid the dithering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So then when you bring the files in, you rename them. Uh, I, well... Michael Helms, who was a previous guest on my show and a good friend of mine too, uh, he does and has the, a great podcast. He yeah. does the Location Sound podcast, yeah, which is awesome. Love it. He um he showed me because with the Mix Pre Three and the Mix Pre Six and and oh well, guess which one he has the Mix Pre Ten T Ten T, which is awesome. Anyway, he told me with the little Wingman app that I think you can use it on your your phone or your iPad or something. The Wingman app, you can instead of just Having the mix pre name the files like you know mix pre zero zero one or mix pre zero zero two. He said, I think you can change the root of the of the file name, and so then every file that's created after that will just have the custom root that you put in. So it might be you know, for instance, for this show T P E S the podcast engineering show. So it could be T P E S dash whatever, right? And then that would. So then when I would download it, it would say, instead of saying mix pre, whatever, it would say TPES, whatever. But but still, I, I I get why you would want to rename it even further than that, because, you know, for the specific episode or the guest name or something like that, right? Right. And to differentiate between interview and intro, outro, and you know, all those sorts of things, for sure. Right. Good point. Yeah, because you're, you're recording everything right into there. That's cool. 
And then Adobe Audition. How much do you love? Well, let me ask you this. Do, do you have to pay the monthly fee for Audition or is the radio station pay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I pay I pay for, for the whole suite. I'm, I'm lucky that I still have the student rate. Um, things are going to get really expensive once I don't. Uh, but yeah, I need the whole suite anyway, so I, I might as well just pay it. Right. So, so you like Audition? Oh, Audition's incredible. I I love Audition. I've I've used a lot of a lot of programs. I've used Ableton. I've used Audacity. Um, I checked out Hindenburg, but for me, Audition is just the one that it just laid out perfectly. The tools make sense. The look of it is is really nice. It's you know it's a dark mode. I like dark mode. Um, there's a lot to love about it. And, and they, every, every time they put out a new version, they're just, I mean, I, I really, I, nowadays I use RX six for my noise reduction and my D reverb and all those things, but they're, they're putting so much into audition. So if you don't have RX six or you don't have, uh, you know, third party plugins, you, you can do everything just within audition. Yeah. I think it's amazing. That's cool. Yeah. And the one thing I like about audition and I've only used it I had a client of uh, maybe like a year and a half or two years ago that that had already done a lot of production in Adobe Audition, so they were going to give me the files to mix it down, which is cool. I mean, that's I wish I could do that like every day, just mix podcast episodes, like have people send me the sessions with all the files, and then I just open it up and make it sound good, and you know, finalize it right, and just just mm-hmm. nail it. Uh, that that would be tremendous. Um, but anyway, so I I did have to buy Audition for a month or two, and um, and I used it, and it's just it's really good. And and the cool thing about it is that there's the multi track side of it, and then there's the the like the stereo editor side of it, which is like the detailed editor, which I really like that that it combines both of those because, for instance, me personally, when I do my production for myself and my clients, I use one multi track DAW to do all my multi track stuff. And then after I mix it all down, I open it up in a different program, which is a detail editor. Mm. And then I do all my detailed editing there. But you do it all in one right. place. Yeah. And it's so easy to switch between those two modes. And there's also, um, there's just some really great shortcuts to get in between them. Um, so yeah, no, no, I definitely, definitely love that feature of Audition for sure. Now, when you, like, how, how, what can you open quickly in that detailed editor? Can you just like highlight a clip on the multi-track DAW and just press a button and it opens up in a detailed editor or something? Well, I guess what I'm talking about more is like copy to new, for instance. So let's say let's say I have kind of a longer raw recording and I, I find a clip that I want to use for an audiogram. You, you know audiograms, right, Chris? Like uh, I've heard you know, of them. Kind of like, yeah. So like I, I want to use for like a 30 second video teaser or something. I, I can just select, select that section um, you know, control click, copy to new, and now I'm in. Now I'm in the the single. Now I'm in the you know the detailed editor. Right. Um, yeah, in between the two of them, maybe I'm overstating it, but um, I mean it's it's pretty easy just to click to click on the multi track and, and get there. Cool. And then when you mix down the multi track, well, let me ask you this: to make edits on the final stereo mix, do you have to like? render it and mix it down to stereo and then open it in the stereo editor um yeah you do but but these days i'm using ophonic multi-track to to mix down okay all right so let's get into that then let's get well first rx6 you're using rx6 which is made by isotope and Mm -hmm. you use that primarily to clean up the track the tracks is that the first thing you do typically yeah, that's that's the first place it goes once it's named and it's uh, sort of so so here's where Hazel come comes into play, Chris. So I figured out the softwares I wanted to use and I figured out the order I wanted to use them in, but I wanted to make this process a lot quicker, getting it from audition, getting it into RX6, then getting it into Ophonic. So uh what I have is I, I have the, the series of folders. Um, each named after that program. And using a, a software called Hazel, I can get those folders to auto, automatically launch um, new newly saved files in that particular program. So when I'm in uh, when I'm in audition, so I'll, I'll find, you know, I'll find the intro or I'll find interview or whatever that kind of section from that recording is. Uh, and I'll, I'll save it as that inside, a folder marked RX6. 
So then once it's saved in there, it automatically launches it in RX6. Oh. And then from RX6, when I export it, I'll export it into the software, I mean, the, the folder called Ophonic, and then it will automatically launch it in Ophonic. But anyways, ba- oh. back to RX6. So, um, so when uh, RXX, I kind of think of that as like the, the washing machine, you know what I mean? The washing machine for all my, for all my audio, <laughs> nice. it, you know, pull it out clean. And depending on the amount of time I have, um, I do like to de-bleed, um, especially if it's, um, you know, if it's, if it's two people, uh, in a, in a, do, like an interview between two people, it's, um, it doesn't take I don't know. To me, to me, it, it seems it seems worthwhile, but um, but it, it takes quite a while to do uh, to deep bleed. Do, do you deep bleed at all, Chris? I don't do that a lot. And when you say it takes a while, you mean the act, like the actual processing of the audio. Yeah, the processing. If it's a like a, a forty-five minute recording, it can take up to twenty minutes, something like that. Oh wow! All right. Well, that also depends on the 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 speed of your computer processor and all that stuff too. Sure. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely do that. I, um, I use, I, I get, I record, you know, 10 seconds of silence to get my noise floor and I do the spectral denoise, um, which I find works really well. And I do the voice denoise and I, I, I like the EQ as well in, in RX6. I'm, I don't have a very in-depth, uh, background in audio engineering. I'm, I'm pretty much self-taught. So as, as much as possible, I like to use presets that seem to be sounding good to me i i I don't want to waste too much time fiddling with an eq because i just don't i don't know quite enough to to make that time valuable um so yeah i find the general enhanced eq and rx6 really sounds great to me so there's a Um, setting called general enhance yeah yeah exactly and it it um it, it it pulls out pulls out the lows it kind of does almost like a high pass on it um and then I, I like what it does with the mids and highs. I'd have to take a look at it to tell you exactly the shape of it. But uh, I've, you know, after fiddling around, that's been the one I've liked the most. That's cool. I like that. And that's a that's a really good way in general for anyone to try different EQ settings and just say, oh, do I, how about this one? Oh, eh, I don't know. Try, how about this one? Oh, that's better, but it's not quite right. How about this one? It's It's pretty cool that these... This software that has a lot of presets, it's really good to go through and just, you know, see how you feel, see how it sounds to you. And that's actually a way you can, it, well, it's a form of ear training, really, because you're, you're, you're listening and you're distinguishing between things. Uh, so it's really good. Mm-hmm. And then there's also the, the deplosive and the DS, and obviously you need those sometimes on RX-6. Yeah, deplosive, I think I use on... Well, I have certain clients that I always use it on them, and I actually know the setting that works on them. The D plosive, and what was the other one you said? Well, DS. Yeah, sometimes you got to d- use the DSer. Yeah, the DSer. I, I also use DSers pretty much on. Well, I won't say on every voice, but most voices. But I don't use it in RX six. But the RX six or RX seven. By the way, we're talking about RX six, but very similar to RX seven, which is the newer version. So, but yeah, the DSers are pretty good. Yeah, yeah, and and for on RXX I use simple voiceover. Uh, as I said, I usually stick to these presets because I just don't have the background to really fiddle. But um, simple voiceover is the one that that I found works the best. That's the DSer preset. Exactly. Yeah, in RX. That's cool. All right, so you put it in the washing machine that you call RXX, and then you and then it comes out of there, and then you put it into Alphonic. Then I put it into Alphonic, exactly. Okay. So if it's if it's like uh, if it's narration, if it's an intro outro, then I'll I'll open it up in Alphonic Leveler, and then if it's if it's you know an interview, then I'll open it up in Alphonic Multitrack, and I actually have the desktop apps. Okay, so you have both desktop, the regular one where you can just process one file, and then the multitrack. Yeah, okay. and it's a little frustrating that they separate them, but um, I guess that's you know they they got to make their money. So the t- tell me what you do with the the Alphonic multi track. How do you how do you do that? So one thing that the multi track does, which is really awesome, um, on one of your episodes. Oh, you had you had um you had Dugan right? Was is it Dan Dugan? Yep, Dan Dugan, and he he was talking about the um. 
the gating. Gosh, what, 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 what's what's the gate thing that he's created? Oh, uh, the auto mixer. The auto mixer, exactly. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know if that's gating, but but what multi track does is it has a cross gate on it. Um, and that's really valuable for for interviews. Um, I, I've tried to do gating stuff um, using a Waves gate. I think the CL1. Mm-hmm. Um, and I find, um, I don't know, it's a little bit tough to do two indiv- to, to gate separately, like two individual tracks, um, because in, in those moments where nobody's talking, it's you know, complete silence. And, um, I don't know. I, I find that the cross gate through multi-track just does a lot, a lot better things. Uh, and then also you can, you can set your target loudness so I can have it spit out the, uh, the mixed, you know, the mixed down track at at negative 16 luffs. Um, so I'm already, you know, I'm already pretty good in terms, I'm already pretty close as far as what I want the track to sound like when I, when I, uh, when I distribute it. Right, right. And the other thing I like about Alphonic Multitrack is that you you put in all the separate tracks. So let's say you have three different people on the podcast. You put you you put in three tracks, the three separate audio files. And then Alphonic Multitrack will go through and basically do the gating on all three, which is awesome. And you then for the output, you can actually choose to have Alphonic Multitrack mix all those three together and spit out one file. And I think you, I think you could do both. You can have Alphonic Multitrack spit out all three files, but but processed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a and or or as well. Like you can do all of those. Cool. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah, which is great. It and really it saves is. a lot of time. Yeah, it saves time, and sometimes what I found from Alphonic Multitrack, and and by the way, I love Alphonic Multitrack. Like, like sometimes when I'll I'll get recordings from clients that have been at like a show, and I think I mentioned it when if you're if there's like four or five people on a stage giving a like a panel on a stage at a live event, it's just great to put. And if you have recordings of all five mics, it's just great to put into Alphonic Multitrack because it saves so much time of production time. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's just it's just a it, it can be a real time saver. And one other thing I found about Alphonic Multitrack, and the reason I usually output the files separately is that even when you set each voice to let's say let's say you you have five voices and you have it spit out five tracks and each track you say, "Okay, put it at minus 19 luffs, right? Because it's a mono track anyway." Well, each voice at minus 19, it's going to be very close to the same volume, but sometimes they're not quite the same volume. Sometimes I like to adjust the levels a little bit. Like, like Yeah. Do, do you also sometimes hear that? I totally hear that. And to be honest, I haven't thought of doing what you just said, but now that you mention it, that's that might be something I do because, yeah, it's not, it's not always perfect. Well, one thing about a lot of stuff I say, Noah, is that it just takes a lot longer to do, but it it, you know, if you're going <laughs> to be a crazy person like I am and sit there until it's exactly right, then then that's what you do. <laughs> right. I think it depends on the client and it depends on the show a little bit, too. <laughs> well, it also depends on the engineer because I just can't put out a final product that isn't correct. Right. Or, or very close to correct, you know what I mean? Nothing's ever perfect, but, you know, <laughs> so yeah something with a, a glaring mistake like that it's just tough tough to put out for sure yeah i mean i still you know even clients who i have i have an effects chain for their voice you know i have everything all set like i should just be able to put in their file and mix down the episode but i can't because it sounds a little different and the compression's hitting a little different and i'm just tweaking a few things and it you know that's what i i, I don't know i guess i like doing that Right. And it's it's your background too, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's where right. So, yeah, I'm more aware of a lot of the finer details than the average person. So, which I mean, there there's so many popular podcasts out there that nobody's aware. No no nobody's aware of what it sounds like. Whereas you, know, you can't get away with that with music. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's well, that's and that's one of the things about podcasting that at times is really depressing that people 
like shows put out episodes that really don't sound good. Yeah, actually, over the past couple days, I was listening to this really cool show called The Cinema Guys. And actually, Brad, who's one of the hosts, he he's a listener of the show. And soon he's going to come on this show. And uh, anyway, I was walking. I just, in the middle of the day, I, sometimes I'll just go walk around my cul-de-sac. Just literally walk in a circle. You know, maybe for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I don't know. Just to walk outside, right? Nothing, nothing huge. And I was listening to their latest episode, which is about Aquaman. And I was just... Having it on, I have an Android phone, and I was holding the Android phone in my hand in front of me, and it was just playing their, the Aquaman episode through the speaker of the phone, and it sounded really good. I mean, the mix, the, the clarity of each voice, the level of each voice was it was, and I actually wrote him. I said, "Dude, nice job. I mean, that's that's really good. You know, like that, I don't know. I I I appreciate that so much." So yeah, well, that's that's kind of the ultimate test of audio quality. If you can play it out of your cell phone speakers and it still sounds good, mm. you know, you, you know, you know, they've done something right, or you've done something right. Yeah, totally. It's such a it's such a fine art. It well, well, anything can be a fine art if you get into the details enough, right? So mm -hmm. I like you were talking about Hazel. and I know uh, at least one other person who told me about Hazel and and that it just it can you know you set up the folders and the routing and it, like then you just put a, something in a folder and uh, oh I know what it was they 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 had other people who were collaborating on pr different projects so he would put it in a folder on his computer like he would copy a file into a folder on his computer and then automatically it would sync with Dropbox into the folder of the person who was supposed who's doing the next task on that piece of audio or something beautiful and, beautiful i love that yeah and he was just saying how it just you set it up and then it does these things automatically i i i, I don't know i mean i don't want to create more work for myself but i kind of want to look into that that sounds cool oh you should you definitely should it doesn't cost that much money i think it's like 10 to 15 bucks um and yeah i mean if it saves you an, an hour of your life i'm sure you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I love it. it. It takes some creativity. You have to think about the things you do and, and how you can get Hazel to do them f for you. And um, there's a little bit of time kind of trialing, trial and error, uh, trying to make it do what you want it to do. But, um, I mean, I, I, I love it. It, it. I really found that once I set this up, it, it made my workflow much quicker. All right, we're going to talk about three things in a row, and I just made a little list for myself. That's why I'm saying it out loud. I want to ask, yeah. we'll talk about Forecast, that little app that creates chapters and stuff, and then I want to ask you about the field. Well, no, then I want to ask you about Spreaker, and then after that, I want to just circle back to the field recording that you're doing. So Forecast is an app that I've heard about. It's said you can make chapters in your audio, and I've I love the idea of chapters. It, it, I, I just love it. I can't, I can't convey how much I love that idea. The problem for me is like, it takes more work, and then I got to figure out where to put the chapters in the audio. And <laughs> right, and and then at the end of the day, not not all podcasters even uh, use use chapters. Mm. Um, but anyway, so Forecast was created by Marco Arment, who I'm sure everyone listening to this podcast will know is, you know, the creator of Overcast and um, Accidental Tech Podcast. Um, and what Forecast basically lets you do is you, you um, open up uh, your WAV file and it takes the markers that you've put in your WAV file and turns them into chapters, basically. And you can encode those chapters with images or URL links or both. Um, and then, and then as, as you're doing all that, it's already encoding it as an MP3. So by the time, and also you're putting in description, um, the podcast art, the name of the episode, all that kind of, all that metadata and all that titling. Um, it can also start to recognize, um, it, it can start recognizing patterns. And if it, if it, if you're always using kind of the same naming conventions, it might start uh, automatically filling stuff like the the podcast art. Um, so by the time you're done filling all that out, it's already encoded the MP3, and you click save, and and um, you know you've got your your podcast ready to ready to upload to um, your RSS feed. 
That's cool. And it and it just does like the tagging and chapters and stuff. Like it doesn't do any luffs leveling or anything like that. No, no, that it does not. Got it. Okay, and you're using Spreaker, which is awesome. Uh, one thing I I well, it's been a while since I looked, but I think the the embeddable player for Spreaker, I thought I always thought they had a really nice looking embeddable player, unless I'm unless I'm not correct in no, my thinking. <laughs> Chris, that's that's why I use them. Seriously, it's okay. it's it's a it's a beautiful embedded player, um, and it gives you lots of different options in terms of customizing it. So if if you have um, a web page that you think you're going to be getting some visits on, or if uh, or if you have you know a blog that accompanies your podcast or something like that, and, and you want the whole the whole product to look right, um, that's a great reason to use Spreaker. It also lets you live broadcast, which I think is a fairly unique feature. Um, also, when I started on it they uh it seemed as though they were getting podcasts onto spotify quicker but since then i think spotify has really sped up their uh submission process so i don't think spreaker has that over other um other rss feed you know platforms uh but yeah the embedded the embedded player is like a real a real draw i think for spreaker and and just the, the whole design of it the whole user interface is really clean and beautiful and and clear right that's cool yeah the so yeah, Spotify, they've, I mean, I just submitted, one of my clients submitted their show, and I think within hours it was on there. It was like done, approved, and up, done, which is cool. The next right. one, well. It, it used to be weeks. Used to be weeks, it, or if at all. In the beginning, it was, you know, I think the Libsyn folks maybe had a leg up on everyone else, a, a slight leg up, but then, yeah. Um, and now now it's Pandora, right? Pandora, right? That's the one that most recently launched podcast but they only have like 420 which i don't mm-hmm. know what all those people are smoking they're they're they they, they bring in 420 <laughs> podcasts really you pick that number <laughs> that's funny i didn't know that <laughs> yeah i think it and i think it is pandora right i'm not crazy sometimes yeah we might have to look in on that for uh, the dopest there might be a story there there you go there might be a story there and so by the way, do you know how many, <laughs> and I totally, I don't even drink alcohol or anything for like literally more than 15 years, but how, do you know how many of the American states where marijuana is already legal? Um, well, I know Colorado, California, Washington, um, okay. there's something going on in New York state, uh, but I, I don't know. I, I'm really covering what's happening up here in Canada. Got it. Yeah, I thought it was like I thought it started with those, but then I think it I thought it started going nuts. Like I literally thought that pro- probably half the states now it's legal. Maybe I'm yeah, wrong, well, I don't know. Well, I mean across the world, uh, you know, th- th- this is happening and it's 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 going to happen across the United States in in the next few years, I think. Um just just due to you know, the pressures of international trade. I mean, Mexico's legalized, Canada's legalized. So yeah, anyways, oh, yeah, that's another right? topic for another time, I guess. But yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. All right. So field recording, this is really exciting. So now when you do field recording, are you, well, let me ask you this for your, the radio station, CJRU, are you, it, it, are you out in the field for the radio station doing recordings? Occasionally. So my, my position at the radio station is the volunteer coordinator. So my, my main job is training our volunteers in radio broadcast and, uh, you know, recording techniques and giving workshops and things like that. But I, I have done my own shows here at the station. So, um, yeah, sometimes I'm out, you know, walking around the campus doing streeters with a reporter mic or I'm, um, you know, using a shotgun mic on location and recording interviews like that. So, yeah, I've done some field recording, but that's my primary job is training. Right. So when you're tr- when you're training the volunteers, do you ever have to, you know, just whip them into shape, just abuse them a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm kidding. Not, not I'm in, kidding. Yeah, not in community radio. Our our motto is be excellent to each other. So <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's cool. That's that's what we aim for. I thought sometimes you might have to, you know, put some physical punishment on these people. <laughs> I'm uh, totally certainly kidding. not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So so then for um for either of of the podcasts, do you do you do any field recording there? Um, not really. I think when I was talking about field recording earlier, I, I meant more setting up, um, you know, setting up in a hotel room, setting up in a, in a boardroom, 
yeah setting up in in scenarios like that and that that's when i use the uh the 57s because they're just so compact and and uh you know they're easy to get around they're indestructible and they sound like seven b's to me i mean if you set them up the right way yeah all right yeah no that i, I like that so okay so and then you're just running those the 57s into the mix pre-3 right that's it i i used to have um I used to have a bunch of cloud lifters, a, a CL2 and two CL1s, and um, I was using a Behringer UMC 404 HD interface, um, and that was so clunky. Carrying around, uh, you know, three or four cloud lifters all the time was no fun. So I, I love having the Mix Pre 3 now. It has the gain to, uh, to you know, to plug in an SM7B um, or you know a 57 and get some really good signal. It's it's an awesome device. I, I I've only had it for a few months, but I'm just loving it. Yeah, me too. And I think everyone who owns a a, a mix pre really loves it. It's just really nice. So when you go, so when you're in a hotel room or where, you know somewhere on location, um, wh- how do you decide where to set up the mics and and all that? I mean, are you like you know how how do you decide? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's it's depends on the scenario. I think you you want to obviously stay as far away from hallways as possible because you know there's going to be noise coming from there. You want to stay away from you know ceiling fans that you can't turn off or uh, you know, I guess HVAC systems, all those sorts of things. Uh, and then depending on your rig, obviously where where the outlet is <laughs> is is always a concern. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I, I have more to say on that than, than that. I mean, obviously, w- where people can comfortably sit and face each other with, you know, enough space. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's every, every, every room's a different challenge, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, cool. And I saw that you sometimes use Shure Beta 87As. Yeah, well, so I, I got a really awesome opportunity in the last couple months um, recording a, a podcast for ESPN called uh, the Zach Low, uh, the the Low Post. Um, just because he's he's a ESPN basketball writer and he he was in Toronto um, and did two podcasts here, and um, so he's a TV guy. So I think he's he's used to holding on to the mics. He's used to going handheld. And the first time I worked with him, he was going handheld with the Sure Fifty Sevens uh, SM Fifty Sevens, and there was a bunch of handling noise. So the second time I worked with him, I brought in um, the Beta 87As, which is, um, I think that's what Marco Arment uses, and it's made as a handheld held mic, right? So um, I, I used those with him and uh, Pascal Siakam, who's a player on the Raptors, who he was interviewing, uh, and that sounded great. I loved I loved those 87s. So that's, I think, going forward, if, if I'm working with people who want to go handheld, that's, that's a great mic to use. Cool. So very little handling noise and uh, very little. Yeah. And it sounds it sounds really good. Yeah. I think that's a super cardioid pattern mic, I think. It is. Yeah. So that's and it's it's not a is it a condenser? It's a condenser. It's a condenser. Yeah. Yeah. So it has that clarity, but it also has the tight pickup pattern. Exactly. So yeah, it's not too bad for for room noise compared to, you know, other condensers. It's 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 pretty good. It's a great mic. Right, I think Corey Coates might have gotten one and started using it. I haven't heard from him in a while, but hey, Corey, if you're listening, <laughs> uh, yeah, the Beta 87A, and I'm and I don't I'm I'm sure Bandrew Scott from Podcastage, I'm sure he must have tested out that mic. Oh, definitely, but but he's a he's a seven B guy. He's a seven B guy, but recently he did something where he and he had a road. Oh, I can't think of what it was. It wasn't. It was a road. Procaster? No, it was a road. It was like a shotgun mic, like a mini shotgun road. I can't remember what it was. Oh, N- NT5? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't remember. N- NTG3 or two? Oh, maybe an NTG3. Okay. Okay. He was using that, and I heard it, and I literally wrote him an email. I'm like, dude, that mic on you, 100%. <laughs> I was like, dude, you sound... that. That's... That mic sounds much better than any of these other mics on your voice. And and he's like, really? Oh, no. Now I might have to switch. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Buddy. Yeah. I, I used a, a 416 
I rented it just for a day uh, last week, which is actually when I heard the episode you put out about the 416 where you asked if, if right. anyone wanted to come on as a guest. And that that microphone sounded amazing on my voice. I mean, it's not something I can afford right now, but um, yeah, I, I loved how that sounded. Yeah, that's a great mic. I'm loving mine. And and one I did receive a note from another listener about the, the last episode where I was talking about the 416 because in that episode, I actually played a couple sound clips of me testing it but here's the, and and the person who wrote me said yeah no your re20 is still king you still sound the best on your re20 which i do agree with for now and probably forever just because <laughs> i like getting really close to the re20 right anyway so but here's the thing i like i didn't use the samples of the 416 that i played last episode they weren't really comparable to like me on the 420 with all my processing because the clips I played to the 416 was with no EQ, no compression, nothing, just like literally dry. And y- yeah. you can't compare a dry signal microphone with one that I've processed quite a bit to be to be awesome, right? You can't it's hard to compare those. It's true, but you could still hear the clarity and just the smoothness of that 416. To to me at least. I I, I was hearing it. Yeah, I mean it's de- well, it's a condenser, so it's ha- more clarity than this RE twenty, which I love. Um, and and yeah, and right now I'm actually using that four sixteen on my daily meditations. Yes, I'm streaming my I'm streaming meditation sessions twice every day. That's crazy, Chris. That's that's wow, wow, yeah. twice a day. Yeah, that's med- amazing. And h- how long are the sessions? Uh, about thirty minutes. Wow. So not, you know, not, not crazy, but yeah, meditate with Chris.com. You want a little, you know, want a little chuckle or you want to <laughs> join me for meditation, meditate with Chris.com, um, twice a day. I, I might do that. <laughs> I, I, I just met, I just meditated with Noah this morning. It was kind of boring. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get on that. Really? You did this morning? Yeah, I did. Oh, just you and yourself. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, Noah, who, yeah, that's you, dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so <laughs> yeah, the 416. So so on my streams, I'm using the 416. And I have it cranked up pretty loud too cuz cuz during the meditation stream like well, I'm really trying to talk at a lot lower volume, like like a lot lower volume. Like I'm like when I'm talking normal on the meditation stream, it's nice and nice and easy. Nice and calm and relaxed. Not like this show where I'm really projecting and I'm right on top of the mic. Um, so I had to crank up the you know the mic pre and my channel strip and uh, and so now so here's the thing with the 416. I don't know if I I don't think I said this on the last week's episode when I'm using the 416 for my meditation streams and I have the I have to crank up the volume. I actually have to turn off my HVAC system because from all the way across the house, it picks it up. I, I think I said, I don't know if I said that on the episode. I, I, don't I, know. I think you said that you, that you didn't have to, but maybe now you have. Well, yeah, no, it, it bleeds bad. It's, it's right. not good. So there's something else you wrote to me in your email about that. You have a Mac mini at home. And so you process simultaneously process some audio at work and at home. <laughs> right. Okay. So going back to, uh, we were talking about the D-bleed and I, I love to do the D-bleed and, and, um, I mean, the D-bleed is not the only thing that can take some time. Like if, if you're on RX6 or R- RX7 and you want to do something like a voice denoise, first it's got to learn. Um, I mean, if you, uh, that's the way I do it at least. It's right. got to kind of scan the entire, the entire track. And if it's a longer track, it, it can take some time. So what I like to do is, I, yeah, I have a, a Mac Mini at home and I use a program called Screens 4 to access it remotely. So let's say... I mean, doing doing a D bleed is pretty much as much as my uh, as my laptop processor can handle. I can't do two D bleeds on the same computer; it just the the program crashes. So I'll I'll D bleed, um, you know, track, you know, speaker A from sp- speaker being the person talking, speaker A from speaker B on the laptop, and speaker B from speaker A um, on my desktop at home um, using you know going into it virtually using this program screens four. Mm. 
Right. You bring up a, a good point about the deep lead. I forgot about this because I, I, I really only think I used it once or maybe I didn't even use it. So when you use the deep lead, you put in your main track and then you actually have to put in the other track that's bleeding onto the first track and then it does all the processing. Yeah, there's the active track and there's the, um, I can't remember what you call the other track, but uh, yeah, there's the active track and then there's the track it's de-bleeding from. Got so it. So one track is, one track is, is learned, um, the, the source track, and then the track that you're actually de-bleeding onto is the active track. Oh, I got it. So right, it, right, so it scans both files and then it figures out where the bleed is happening and what the bleed sounds like and then it can take it out with, with well, a lot of precision. No, it, it's, it's, it scans one file and then pulls, pulls that file out of the other file. It, right. it, it doesn't do both simultaneously. So to do both simultaneously, that's why I do it on two different computers because the processor can't, can't handle doing it, doing both on one computer. That's cool. I love that how you can log in to your home computer from work and just, you know, upload, you know, upload a file there and de-bleed it and that's cool. Yeah. Um Chris, something else I I mentioned in in the email and maybe this isn't the way you want it to be segued, but um uh, do you know anything about the Tascam DR uh 10X? No. So it's an inline or I think inline's the right word, recorder that I can plug directly into uh, a reporter microphone, like you could plug it directly into, I mean, what I have is the Rode reporter, um, but you could also do the, um, what, what's, are the EV R50 or like any kind of reporter mic. So there's no XLR cable. It's just, uh, it's recorder plugged directly into mic. Oh, okay. That's like, uh, well, Zoom kind of does that too. They have like the attachments you can attach to the top. Right, right. Well, kind of, but in, in the reverse order where, I mean, Zoom has microphones that plug into recorders, but this is a recorder that plugs into microphones. Oh, okay. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So the DR-10X. Yeah, the Tascam DR-10X, and I, I love it. It's, it's a really, really great piece of gear, especially um, it, it records a backup recording um under i think 10 db lower than than the main recording so sometimes if i if i'm um helping out a friend to make their first podcast or something i'll hand them my road reporter which um is pretty Im impervious to to wind sound or anything like that or plosives and i give them this task mdr 10x and uh it's just so easy for them to record really good audio especially streeters so um that's something for people to check out if they want to record streeters i'd check out the task mdr 10x and you can plug that into a road reporter or a or an evre 20 uh, uh sorry re50 and it's it's a it's a, it's a great recorder that's cool. I've never heard anyone call them streeters. I like that. Like the the process of going out and recording on the street. I like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Streeters. Yeah, streeters. Yeah, I'm going to go I got to go do a streeter today. Yep. So, um yeah, the um the Rode Reporter, right? It's a long mic. It, it it's an omnidirectional mic. I think I've um I think Ross Brand might have had one of these at one of the sh one of the live shows he recorded, but yeah, omnidirectional mic, that's good too. So it kind of just picks up everything, right? That's good. Exactly. Yeah, you can hold it right. You can pretty much, I mean, if there's not too much wind, you can hold it right in between you and your interview subject. Right. So you're saying this Tascam DR10X, this inline recorder, it just literally plugs onto the bottom of the mic. Exactly. It has It has. Um, it has a male uh, XL. Right. Does it have a male? Yeah, and it No, it has it, it has a female, but it's probably sorry, it has protruding a female. out. Yeah. It's a protrude. <laughs> <laughs> it is a <laughs> Ralph Rivera's going to love that one. He's going to Oh I, my god. I won't get into that, but um yeah, you, it, it's a protruding female that you can put into the male. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I t I'm telling you, I I'm already telling you. Ralph M Rivera is going to clip that audio that you just heard and put it on uh, the web search social podcast, which, which he just, him and his wife just revived their old podcast. Yeah. Which is cool. Anyway. So that's cool. I like that. I like the, the DR 10 X goes right on to the, I haven't, I haven't seen the DR 10. You know what? I want to look at a picture right now. I'm going to pull it up because I pulled up the road reporter. 
I know this isn't probably the best thing to do on a podcast <laughs> when people can't see anything, but oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's like just like a little small recorder. It's like a yeah. little box that you plug onto the bottom of a mic and then it just records. That's cool. It's really simple. I mean, you can't do phantom power out of it, but um, you, you throw, if you're using dynamic mics like a road reporter, um, all, it, all it takes is, is, is a, a AAA battery and it will last for tens of hours. So it's, it's a really handy thing to have in your bag. That is really cool. And so ab- about how much does that thing cost? I think... I mean, it's different here in Canada than it is in the states. Everything's more expensive here. Okay. I think I think it cost me something like 150 bucks. 150? Yeah, that's not bad. I'm just I'm just looking it up on Amazon. But it would definitely be cheaper in the states. Yeah, 120. It's interesting. I was looking kind of. And so, do you ever work on any like video where you're using time code and syncing up to video and stuff like that? Almost never, but um, I know when I do, I'm ready to do it with this Mix Pre 3. Uh, but yeah, I, I haven't done much of that. Cool. All right. Well, what? Uh, we're, last question. What is the next piece of gear you're going to buy? Mm, the next piece of gear, it might be a pair of Sure Beta 87As. Um, you know, if I, if I win the lottery, it will be a 416. <laughs> nice. um, but uh, yeah, probably the Beta... 87 A's. I really, uh, I was really happy with how, how they did that job for, uh, for that podcast. So yeah. Cool. And, uh, sorry, I lied. This is the last question. What's your favorite Barry clip? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. What about, oh, are you saying you don't like the, uh, wait, hold on. Where is it? You don't like, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) I like that one almost as much. The higher pitch. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know whenever I think of Ralph M. Rivera and I think of his podcast, this is Bar- Barry. Let me t- well, let me just ask Barry. Barry, what do you think of, uh, you know, when you listen to Ralph M. Rivera's uh, web search social podcast, what do you what what are you thinking? What's your what what's your feeling? There's no activity, no giggle, no nothing. <laughs> oh, dude. Well. Noah Snyderman, this has been awesome, dude. I'm really happy you could come on to the podcast engineering show and hang with me. You, uh, you're the producer of the dopest, and you're the producer slash host of Innovating Employment. All the links will be on in the show notes, of course. So, thanks for hanging with me, man. Chris, it was great to talk to you. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, and you know you have to do one last thing. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, let me start the music. That's cool. You already know what you have to do. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate you. Check out Podcast Engineering School if you really want to learn how to, you know, become a really hardcore podcast engineer. Uh, And now we're both going to yell. I know. And and you're listening. I'm on it. I'm on it. If you're listening to this, you can yell it as well. Sound great. That's all you have to yell. Sound great. All right. Ready? All right. Go. Sound Sound great. great. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah! Yeah! You walk away from me where And you can't say that I'm so rare But you're playing out on me now, now You like to lose control where I'm so
Yeah!